Hey YouTube, it's Lucy. Welcome back to my channel. If you can hear a baby crying in the distance, it's because there's a baby crying in the distance and it's mine. But don't worry, he's with his nanny and he's being fed. If this is your first time coming to my channel, I'm a new mom, I'm 29 years old, and my son Milo is just about four months old. Thank you so much to Blue Land for sponsoring today's video. I just got a ton of new beautiful cleaning supplies from them, so I'll share that a bit later. The reason I really wanted to make this video is because I was the first of most of my friends to have a baby, and so I truly did not know at all what to expect. I thought I knew just from following some people on Instagram and having a couple of friends and family members here and there with babies, but I knew nothing. So hopefully today's video can just shed some light on what the reality is like when you have a newborn. Something I wanna say up front is that when people make expectation versus reality videos, you have to keep in mind that this is their expectations versus their reality. Everyone's reality is different. What I'm sharing with you today is just what I expected and then what actually is the case for me in my life. But keep in mind, if you don't have a baby yet, it's not like my reality is going to be your reality. And of course, some people don't even wanna have a baby, so I just hope this video is entertaining and insightful. Let's get into it. You might have watched the video that I made with my husband, Michael, back when I was pregnant, and it was all about how we knew we were ready to have a baby. If you haven't seen that, I will link it for you up here, and you can go watch that first. But what I will say is that I thought I was ready. I was excited, Michael and I were at a good place in our relationship, and that's why we decided we were ready to start trying. Now, looking back on that, there's no way I could have possibly known what was about to come. What I wanna share is that motherhood is such a journey, and I've only been in it for four months. But there are lots of highs, lots of lows. It's just kind of a constant roller coaster. And so I don't want this video to scare anyone. I'm just trying to share the truth. Okay, I'm gonna start with a positive here. I expected to love my son. I knew that I was so excited to meet him and I expected that it was going to feel amazing to look at him. The reality is that I couldn't possibly fathom just how much I was going to love this human. I look into his eyes and I absolutely melt. Every time he smiles, I can't explain how it feels. <laughs> when I wake up first thing in the morning, I am so, so excited to go into his room and see him. And at the end of the day, I am so sad that I have to put him in the bed and leave him and walk out of his room because all I wanna do is spend 24 seven with him. And it's just insane that Michael and I look at him and we think this is half me and half you. It feels like a magical Harry Potter situation that we just created a human out of thin air. And when we look at him, our lives just feel totally complete. I remember being so over pregnancy by the end and I felt so excited to be postpartum because I thought nothing can be worse than the way I'm feeling right now. The reality is that my postpartum body was not much more enjoyable than my pregnancy body. I had a pretty easy vaginal birth but I still had a first degree tear on the inside. Additionally, I had some pain and rash on my back from the epidural. I also felt like my boobs were in a lot of weird pain and sensations from having the milk come in and starting the breastfeeding process. And on top of that, it was just so much more care and energy that needed to go into my body. I was now wearing pads because I was bleeding for another few weeks. I also was wearing nipple pads all day because of my leaking boobs. The end of pregnancy, no matter how difficult it seemed, was actually easier than the first few weeks of being postpartum. I kind of just envisioned what my home would feel like with a baby and I remember feeling like, it's going to be this apartment that I live in with a baby. The reality is that when we came home from the hospital, every single zone of our apartment felt entirely different. I honestly felt like we moved to a new apartment. Our office, which used to be the space that Michael and I did our work in, became a temporary storage space for dirty laundry and all the baby supplies that we weren't ready to use yet. We were both on parental leave, so we didn't use that for work anymore. Our living room, which used to be this clean, pristine living space, all of a sudden was strewn with burp cloths and bouncers and swings, and it's pretty much a huge mess at the end of every day. The kitchen, which used to be a very clean and tidy zone, became sort of a holding station for pub parts and bottles, and all of a sudden there were drying racks everywhere and stuff just on the counter all the time. Our bedroom, which used to be our private clean space, all of a sudden became a pumping station for me. And so I set up this little nursing cart next to my bed for when I pump overnight and I have a cooler next to the bed and there's towels on the bed and it's just completely different from how it used to be. And then the nursery, which before Milo was born, felt like this empty, clean, beautiful space, all of a sudden became 
a twister tornado. And our apartment foyer, which used to just be a clean entry space, is now a parking lot for strollers. Our home has just become so much messier than it used to be, and so this is where Blue Lamp comes in. It's been a lot harder than I thought it would be to not use single-use plastic products with a baby. I recently learned that an estimated 5 billion plastic hand soap and cleaning bottles are thrown away each year, and each bottle can be made up of more than 90% water, which is a total lose-lose situation for the planet. So with Blue Lamp, you just buy the bottles once, they look like this, and then you can reuse them and refill them forever. You just fill up the bottles with warm water and then you drop in one of the spray cleaner tablets. They have glass cleaner, bathroom cleaner, and multi-surface cleaner. And the tablets come in these little compostable paper packages. There's also a foaming hand soap and then there are also dishwasher tablets and laundry detergent tablets. All of the packaging is honestly so beautiful and aesthetically pleasing. It's one of the things in my house that I get complimented on the most often when people come over. Because to be honest, my new reality is having cleaning supplies like this out on the counter at all times so that I can just grab and go. So right now you can get 20% off your first order if you go to blueland.com slash Lucy. When you buy a kit, the bottles start at just $10 and they're meant to be reused forever with these refill tablets that start at just $2. They smell really good, it all looks really pretty, and it's not single-use plastic, so it makes me feel really happy. So once again, that's 20% off your first order at blueland.com slash Lucy. And I'm going to leave that on the screen for you. That's blueland.com slash my name spelled L-U-C-I-E. Take a picture. I expected my work to entirely come to a halt. I thought that I would be totally uninterested in keeping up my job and that all I would care about was this child. The reality is that I actually became more interested and more excited to do my work. Milo came three weeks early, so when he was born, I actually hadn't wrapped up all of my projects and I spent a decent amount of time in those first few weeks while he was sleeping on the countertop doing some work and answering emails and to be honest doing work actually made me feel better in those times when I was feeling sad it just made me feel like I was still myself I still had a little piece of Lucy in there and I actually became really motivated I knew that I could sort of expect to be tired everyone told me if you think you're tired now during pregnancy just wait until the baby comes the reality is that we were actually experiencing next level exhaustion, something I had never felt in my life before. We had a baby nurse for the first month of Milo's life, and if you're interested in more on that, I did a whole Q&A on my Instagram, so definitely go check it out, it's in a highlight. But I feel really fortunate that we had that nurse for our first month with a baby because she taught us so much and she was able to take on all the night shifts so Michael and I could catch up on some sleep. But when she left, it hit us like a train and Michael and I had no idea what we were in for those first few weeks on our own. It was brutal and I think there are very few things in life that are worse than being sleep deprived. It honestly just leaks into every element of your day. It makes you physically ill, mentally ill, and just overall unwell. I expected breastfeeding to just be this simple, very easy and natural thing. I had seen tons of pictures of moms breastfeeding and a lot of times they just have the baby looped under their arm and it seems so easy. And no one really talked to me about what breastfeeding would mean for my life and my schedule. But the reality is that the physical and the mental demands of breastfeeding are rewarding yet exhausting. There's such a learning curve to the whole breastfeeding situation. I honestly think I'm gonna make a video that's all about breastfeeding and pumping because it's just top of mind for me right now and I do it every day. But if you are interested in that, I would highly recommend you follow me on TikTok because I've been sharing a lot of pumping content. I've been going live and pumping live and I really just have this goal to teach moms and soon to be moms and future moms all about what pumping and breastfeeding is actually like because nobody shared this information with me beforehand and I had no idea what to expect. I expected postpartum to be kind of like a party with a baby. I had friends that had babies and I remember going over to visit their baby for one hour was absolutely, without a doubt, the best hour of my entire day. So of course, I was envisioning that they got to have a 24 hour party with this baby every single day. The reality is that postpartum, when Michael and I got home from the hospital, we were a mess for a good week to two weeks. It just feels really heavy and you expect it to be really jovial and lighthearted and playful, but it's like this immense 
weight on you all of a sudden. Michael and I spent a good portion of our first week home crying to one another, just sobbing, emotions pouring out. We asked each other a number of times, what have we done? And keep in mind, we planned to have a baby, we wanted a baby, and even still, once he came, we were very much like, what is happening? I had a pretty level pregnancy experience, and when it came to postpartum, I thought I would somehow be exempt from getting the baby blues or from feeling extreme postpartum hormones, but I was not exempt. Especially at night when it got dark out and the sun was setting, I would just get so sad. It was definitely not what I expected. I expected to have hundreds of family photos. Me, Michael, Milo, smiling together, these high quality, beautiful family pictures. The reality is that we only have photos on our phone of Milo. Every so often, one of us will take a photo of the other one with Milo. So there's you know, some photos of Milo and daddy, some photos of Milo and mommy, and only once in a blue moon when someone comes over and thinks, oh, let me take a family photo for you, that's the only real time we get photos of the three of us. Otherwise, it's just all Milo all the time. Expectation. I thought that I was going to be completely consumed with anxiety about whether the baby was continuing to breathe, specifically overnight. Even during my pregnancy, I noticed that I was feeling little pangs of that anxiety when I wouldn't feel him kick for short periods of time and I would try drinking juice to induce the kicks and I was always pushing and poking and prodding at him to make sure he was still alive and moving. And I remember thinking, when this thing's out of my body, I'm just gonna be consumed all day with fear that he's gonna stop breathing. The reality is that I'm really grateful to say that I did not experience postpartum anxiety and I'm really happy to say that I was able to trust that he would continue breathing when he was in his crib alone. Our pediatrician at one of our early visits said something to me that stuck with me. She said, he's a caveman, he knows how to keep himself alive. She kind of explained to me what would happen if he spit up when he was sleeping on his back and if I didn't hear him scream, what he would do and how he would turn his head to the side and he would vomit out to the side and that he wouldn't choke on his own spit up. I, that was a concern of mine early on. And she sort of just calmed my fears very quickly by telling me he's a caveman, he knows how to stay alive. And from that moment forward, I have been very calm about not checking on his breathing. We haven't used any sort of breathing monitors, we didn't use the sock, we didn't use the belly band, I just trust that he knows how to stay alive. Expectation. At the end of my pregnancy, I was just so over maternity clothes and I was so excited to go back to my regular cute clothes that were in my closet. I remember looking at my outfits thinking, I can't wait to wear this again. I'm gonna dress so cute. I'm just so excited for this. The reality is that postpartum, pretty much all I wore was sweats. The baby would spit up on almost everything I wore, so I had no drive to wear anything that was cute. Also, I didn't fit into my pants anymore, so I needed to buy all new jeans. A lot of the old clothes that I wore were not really functional for nursing. Any sort of jumpsuit or anything that wasn't easy to get my boob out was a no-go. But at the end of the day, I just wanted to be comfortable, so all I could think about was pulling the most comfortable sweatsuit out of my closet, putting it on, and basically spending the whole day in pajamas. Another reality of the situation is that I actually still love my maternity clothes because they're really the most comfortable and I'm wearing my maternity leggings right now. Can't stop, won't stop. Expectation. I had so many cute newborn outfits for Milo picked out. I expected that I would wake up in the morning, I would go to his closet, I would pick out the cutest outfit, and I would dress him in all these adorable newborn outfits every single day. The reality is that not only did Milo grow out of his baby newborn outfits very quickly, like he did not fit into anything after about two weeks. In reality, we only ever really put him in cute, fancy outfits when we're going somewhere for some sort of an event which happens very rarely around here. For the most part, he lives in pajamas and we have a few go-to outfits that he basically just wears over and over again. I'm gonna preface this with some background about Milo's sleep. So for the first month of his life, he slept in his room with the baby nurse and then when the baby nurse left, we tried him next to us in his mini crib in our room because I know the recommendation is to put the baby in your room. We absolutely could not sleep that way. He was a grunter, he was so loud, we could not get any sleep with him next to us. Our pediatrician at the one month visit told us to put him in his own room and to just listen for him on the monitor. My expectation was that if my baby was not right next to me in my room, I wasn't gonna hear him. And if he cried in the middle of the night, I wouldn't be able to attend to him because I'd be in a deep sleep and I wouldn't hear his cry from down the hall. 
The reality is that my brain has been entirely rewired and even if Milo is down the hall and the doors are closed, if he makes a peep, I can hear it. I have supersonic audio abilities now, just for my baby's cry. And I can be in the middle of the deepest sleep of my life, but if he makes a peep, I wake up and hear it, and Michael is still sleeping like a log next to me. That also does translate into a bit of a phantom cry situation, where sometimes I hear the cry, but he's not actually crying. That happens a lot in the shower, it often happens at night, but I will say there is rarely a time when he's crying when I don't hear it. I expected that a newborn would be so fragile and breakable and that every time I held him I would be nervous that I was going to snap him in half. The reality is that you quickly learn that you're not going to break a child. It's almost like when you get a new iPhone and your first week or two with it you're very gentle and you lay it down on the counter and you're scared to drop it and then by the next week you're throwing it across the room and you don't care anymore because you realize it's fine. Not that I've ever thrown Milo across the room, but I will say that I've gotten a lot less scared to handle him. And I can now pick him up, I can hold him under my arm, and I just know I'm not gonna pull his arm out of his socket or break his leg. I honestly thought that once I had a baby, everything else in my life would stop mattering. And the only thing that would matter would be this child. I thought my work would become unimportant, my friends would become secondary, Every little stress and issue that was popping up would melt away and I would just care about the child. The reality of the situation is that everything else in my life still matters. I still care about my friends, I still care about my work, I still have goals and aspirations and personal things that I want to achieve and just because I have a baby, none of that has changed. I'm still me, guys. So if you're planning to have kids in the future, I hope this video was useful to you. If you're not planning to have kids, I just hope that you were entertained and I'm shocked that you made it this far, but thank you for being here today. Thank you for coming back to my YouTube channel. Please drop a comment down below and let me know what other videos you want to see. I'm really excited to keep making videos for you and to dive back into work. See you next time. Bye.